my name is Helen Mainja, married to one husband, Mark Kehara Geita, and this is my Burn in the Oven stories. I'm a mother of three boys, James, Joseph, and Jeremy. Uh, so I'll start with the story of James, who is my firstborn. He's turning seven years in May 31st this month. And uh, I realized I was pregnant. It was a bit funny, because in my three pregnancies, only one I planned for, the rest, <laughs> so I was then working in Mulolongo at the Way Bridge and I just began getting sick. So we were staying with my hubby, but we were planning for the wedding. In the Mideast, I realized I was pregnant, but first it was, I, I didn't realize it was pregnancy, I was diagnosed. I don't know whether it was TB or something. So. Uh, all along I was doing some injections but I missed my periods and so I, I decided let me do a test and boom I'm pregnant so we started the journey we cancelled everything about the weddings and the rest I can say in my three pregnancies that was the toughest toughest because I puked from day one to the end even when delivering, I was puking. So I can say that was one of the toughest pregnancies. But all the same, it was not that bad. Other than puking, nothing else bad. It was just a nice one. No cravings at all, at all, nothing. Because anything that goes in, comes out. So no cravings. I used to take anything, any beech tree, it comes out. So I delivered it. St. Francis Hospital in Kasarani and it was just a nice delivery because although it was a bit longer comparing with the others uh, I went to the hospital no pains uh, the EDD is, is over so I went they told me to check and they told me that I had dilated two centimeters so they told me they'll admit me I was admitted so I told them I just stay around the hospital. I just go back and when the pain will come, I'll just come back. And uh, at night of 30th, at around 2, 2 a.m., I started dilating. And uh, I took some time. I, had, I was told by a friend to not rush to the hospital unless the, the intervals of the pain are too close. So it took some time and I went to the hospital at around six. I stayed, I stayed, but the progress was good. Then at around four, that was when I was delivering. But now the shock on me was when they decided to do an epistectomy on me. I was not expecting it. No one had informed me of it. So it was a shock of my life. And it made me go through a uh, post pattern. So when I went home, is the worst mistake that I did. And I would advise every other woman to never do that. Because I think because of the, the curiosity, I don't know, and the anxiety to know what they had done. Because I had not heard of the epistectomy. I decided to check to check and know what they did and it was the worst, worst, worst mistake. Whatever I saw, mm, it's not good. Then it was a good baby. The journey has been smooth. He is now in PP2, going to PP, to grade one on July. And that's my first story of my first birth.
Then we go to the second bond. That is the only child that I planned for. His name is Ryan Joseph Minja, named after my father. So brown, just like me. So uh, I took time to get pregnant because I think I can remember very well. I started looking for the baby at around November, no, October. So I stayed October, November, December, nothing, nothing, nothing. But I think on January, that's when I conceived. It was just a smooth pregnancy. Uh, Clothings, nyamachoma, nyamachoma. And uh, it was just a nice one. I think all my pregnancies, I start the clinics at five months. So I normally go, it's just a nice one. No much do. Do the scan, know the sex. And it's okay. So the second born, I was expecting a girl, and then boom, it's another boy. I said it's okay. I'm still young, <laughs> so I might get another one. So it was a girl pregnancy all through until the the end. I think my EDD was around 25th September. So I went for a photo shoot. Um, on seven, no, 16th of September. And then the following day, we went with my hubby to Gikomba to look for these seats. So in the evening, I started feeling some pain. I wasn't sure because I knew my ADD was not thin. So I could move in and out of the bedroom and I could tell my hubby, hey, it's like I'm feeling some pain, but they were not the little pain of bath. So at around six in the morning the water erupted and we rushed to the hospital and it was the easiest bath. Getting to the hospital, uh, getting to the ward and the is here. In 10 minutes I was done. It was the best. The best of all. I really enjoyed. I remember we didn't have the the clinic book so when we got to the hospital, my husband went back home to get the book. And when he came back to the hospital, he was like, where's my wife? He was told, no, she has just delivered. And oh, he could say, no, 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 that might be a long woman. My wife has just arrived, so no way. So I could hear well in the labor room. So they, they told him, that's your baby. He said, no. In fact, my baby can't be brown, only my wife is brown. <laughs> so it was funny, and then I came out, and he was like, what? Nah, that's not truth. Well, I told him that's our baby. And it was nice. In a day, we left the hospital. But after, um, after two days, I started getting sick. My leg started swelling, and I just thought, this is postpartum problems. But as time went by, it continued swelling, turning the color, and it was very painful. But I took time thinking, ita, ita rudi tu sawa ni letu wanasema maji, wa inaenda kwa miku. But uh, on, I gave birth on Monday morning. On Sunday, I decided to go to the hospital. My husband had just left the house, and I was in pain. So I had my friend, Mama Kevin, who had come to visit me with her daughter, Precious. So I just told her, let's go and check what's up with this leg because it's becoming too painful and the swelling and the turning of the color is not changing. My husband had left with some sisters just to push them. So we got to the hospital and I think that movement wasn't the state of my leg. So when I got to the hospital and I'm the one who drove myself, I could not leave that car. When I tried to stand up, I just urinated there. They brought me a, a wheelchair 
I was wheeled to the hospital, went straight to the doctor. When the doctor checked my leg, it had some swellings. I said he is suspecting I have some clots. So I was taken for an X-ray and they confirmed yes, I had some clots. They said it was caused by the pregnancy. I can't understand much about it, but they told me because of the weight, the blood tended to not come up the right way. So we went back to the doctor from the X-ray and I was told I am going to be admitted. I didn't believe because I thought it's just a small thing. And then, and then I started to be treated the clots. Me and my baby, my five, six days baby, we were in the hospital. My husband came, he was in shock also. Uh, people started streaming in the hospital and it was a, a shock. So there and then they started treating me. I stayed in the hospital around 10 days. Then I was discharged and uh, I was advised next time I want to get pregnant, I should see the doctor first so that they can put me through the treatment because most of the clots are caused by pregnancy. So we went back home, the baby grew, and he's now three, eight months. And that was my second born baby, he's a good boy. So we go to my third born. This is a surprise baby. In fact, we called him Jeremy because he's the baby we didn't see coming. Maybe only God knew him the way the Bible says, I knew you before you were born. <laughs> so I was in my errand. But funny enough, I used to use save this. And I think it's, it's, it's a mystic, a big, big, big one. That's a charm. <laughs> so I had gone to Nakuru for the burial of my friend and we were with my best friend, she's called Faith. Uh, so she was pregnant, but in, in, by, by coincidence we mostly get pregnant at the same time. Because my firstborn is born May 30, 31st, his firstborn is June 5th. Secondborn, August, mine, September. But this third born me, I decided, no, it's pretty, it's too much. But I think it is planned from heaven. So we were with her and she could tell me, hey, Helen, you said you're looking for a girl. So, ah, uh, Mimi, nakoja. But then in the barrio, the food was so sweet. So I told her, pana, wambu mi narudia, and juwa pa kuna mchana yeah, I'm going for another plate. So I went. Then I came back to Nairobi. And but even in her house, I used to take food. I want more. So when I came back, I told her, What? I think I've missed my periods. There must be something. I, I didn't believe. So I stayed for a week. And I'm like, no, 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 no. All my life, I think I was in marriage for around eight, nine years. I, used, I was using safety, so they were perfect for me. Wow. So I went to the chemist, took the test kit, went and tested. Yes, it's there. Because my partner is in Zile, So I moved around. I could take a, a test kit from Githurai, Ruizambu. Still, I couldn't believe. And no, 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 no way, no way. I was not ready for pregnancy at all, at all. In fact, I was then in, in school. I was in chemo doing my degree. So, no way, I'm pregnant. And I was almost graduating. But then, boom, it's there. 
so my mind was reminding me remember you're not supposed to get pregnant before you see a doctor lest the clot liquor so hey i'm pregnant i think i stayed for two weeks without telling my hubby but i think he is a bit observant because after sometimes he asked me hey Eh, na sija kuona nini? Eh, hey, nikamwambia we. Yo maneno tutaongea baadaye so but later I told him and he said he's okay. He's such a cool guy. He said ni sawa. So we started the journey. It was a smooth one but had a very high observation by the doctors lest the clots occur because you can't be treated when pregnant. So we went along cravings for pizza, 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 pizza. So TRM ilikuwa inanijua bele na nyuma but then i had a business around there so i had cravings of pizza 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 so the journey went on i started my clinics a bit early for that because of that thing then at around seven months my legs started the pains again went back to the hospital so my doctor he was told, called dr kamau he's just a medical officer but he said i need to see a gynecologist so he connected me with a gynecologist dr misba in st francis then they realized it's like my clothes are recurring once again and i'm pregnant so i went for another scan and they realized yes they are trying to show up from my knee below they are trying to come up so they decided we either remove the baby or I do injections until birth. So my hubby decided we can remove the baby. It's better I do the injections. So I did around 60, 60 something injections. This is what I inject myself on every day, every day. I do inject myself with this one. I have a lot of pen, a lot, there's so many, they are not here. So, this is what I do. You remove it like that. So painful. Is the injection check whether it has some air inside? It doesn't have, so you go ahead and inject anywhere where there is muscles like that. It's done. Thank you. It's not easy, but I'm making it. My time is growing bigger, bigger. I'll make it. I'm remaining with only 49 injections. Bye bye. From then to birth. So it was a very tough journey for me. A very tough one doing those injections. Every day I started from one hand to the other one, moved to my leg and they were draining me too much, too much. I remember I used to wake up and I can't take anything because of the pain. Whenever I'm think uh, I want to inject myself, it used to drain me so much. And then when I go to work, I had a problem of fainting. But that was a, a usual thing because even in my other pregnancies, I used to faint, but this one it used to recur every now and then. I remember once, in my job, I fainted and people came around. And whenever I faint, I go off and I sweat, I sweat. So everyone was like, what's up? She's pregnant, but they called my husband and he assured them she will just wake up. It's something that normally happens to her. So I continued, it was a bit tough for me because I remember people used to say, Kwani Helen and Jidunga Madawa, Amianza madawa ya kulevia na hakuna mimba because they couldn't understand why. Because whenever I couldn't remember, I need to inject myself. I just did it anyway. So it, that was my toughest journey. Then when I, I remember I was, the EDD was supposed to be around May 20th. 
So I decided to go for a photo shoot. I think a week earlier. A week and some days. I went on a Saturday. Then on Sunday, my husband was leaving. And I told him, I think I need to see the guy. And I can't feel the movements of the baby well. So we just left each other. He drove to the car. I drove to the hospital. We were to meet with the guy. So while in the hospital, the guy took some time to get to the hospital. And she advised me to go to the mart to be checked. So when I got there, they decided to take the to check the BP of the baby, my BP and everything. And then to my side place, they said the pressure of the baby is too high. And I was like, how? I'm not even due. So they called my gyna. She came and decided, you know what? Now that your injections, and these injections are used to make the, the blood so thin. So, we are at a risk if the pressure of the baby is going high. So me, I'm like, so what? So they said we either do a CS, an emergency one, or we try a normal birth through induction. And I had told you earlier, me, an induction, we don't do the same WhatsApp group. So I decided I better go for a CS. Because uh, me, your induction, Upon a big, my guide, I insisted, no, 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 Helen, it will be safe. Do you want to talk to me? Mimi, you open us. So I rushed back to the house. My husband came back, we went back to the hospital, and they did a CS. And I that, that was so fast. The baby was small, weighing 2.8. So I stayed in the hospital. It's during Corona, no one is visiting you, you're just alone. I stayed for two days and the third day I left the hospital. I stopped the injection for a short while, then I went back, but I, I did the injections for just like two weeks and the clothes left. So from my first pregnancy, I started the clinics at around five months. And they were so important to, for, to me and beneficial because especially for the first time mothers, you get a lot of advices. You see, there are those advices you get from people outside there, but from the hospital, from the, those nurses, they will tell you in details and they will prepare you. Despite the pain that is always sounds too big for everyone, after birth, it's sweet. And this pain, it doesn't last for long, but it depends with people. For me, what I don't, I don't advocate for myself alone, maybe other people can try it, is the induction part of it. But for these antenatal clinics, they are the best. You get advices, they go check your baby, you go for ultrasounds, as many as you wish. Some people say, do you ultrasound it? No, 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 because I remember with my third born, every month, not even a month, because I used to see my gyna and go for the normal clinic, see my doctor, they used to tell me, we just go do an ultrasound. So I think I did over 10. So clinics are very important, very important, because they familiarize something with your baby that can be, they can be changed or some help can be offered. But if you stay at home, you must be surprised the last minute. I advocate for clinic, clinic, clinic. They are very good. They are very good. They also prepare you psychologically. Una zoyana na hospital yako mapema. I think my three pregnancies all were different. Because the first one, that thing of throwing, from day one, I could throw, throw, throw. It's anything. I remember I had the exams, because uh, then I had done a diploma and I was going for my exams at around November. I remember my husband telling me, you go, brush your teeth, throw, then you get into my car. That was a precondition every other time. Even if we go to a place and we eat, he could insist, umetapika. Wewe utapike jumista kitu subuane kwa gari. I remember we had a trip once to Meru. And then I had not eaten something. And when we got to Juja, I insisted I take some water. I puked, I puked. And then we started the journey. We got to um, 
sagana i think i took a banana i puked i remember we almost crashed cuz nilimwambia from nowhere si mama si mama si mama ali si mama karibu na bridge nikatapika that was my journey with the first boat it was nothing good nothing better it was just a button so the second bone not bad that was not too bad uh it was just a nice one cuz i think i i was ready i was ready for it then the third bone hey yo it was the hardest of all cuz now i used to think i was advised not to be pregnant before i go see a doctor now it has happened but then it was just a nice one he used to tell me oh we'll be well but it was a big risk cuz uh, if the clots go up to the heart we are done so it was a big risk and every other time i could think about it i have some small boys i couldn't think of leaving them so it was really draining me i think uh all through the pregnancy i only had like 6 kg all through i didn't add any weight i was in fact every time i go for clinics when i lose weight but they could not understand the injections and the thinking of how it will end up in fact i remember we were going to the theater they were not very sure because of the injections cause they had told me when i get close to giving birth i will stop so that the blood can at least go back to normal but now i had already done the injections and we need to do the cs but i thank god it all went well and i really thank god for that 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 was the a bit a bit tricky pregnancy for me this the third one all the same yeah, the boys are good and i thank god and i only have three and three are okay with me no more <laughs> So my advice to new mothers especially on episectomy that one I think I missed it cuz then I don't think the baby showers were like nowadays so no one told me no one prepared me psychologically that such a thing might happen so I just had them saying we are going to do a cut and I was like what where how to who so it really drained me so i can advise and this is something i do in every other baby shower that i go i always tell mothers this might might happen so if it happens just do the salt which is a bit painful but you need to do the salt and then it heals and uh, when i went back to my gyna she assured me you're okay you're perfect but before then it had drained me i was feeling as if i've lost something but she assured me this is just a normal process this is something happens to so many people and it's just to save your baby if maybe it could not have been done maybe we could have lost the baby or we get a, a baby with some problems so i can advise every mother every mother if it happens to you just know you are in safe hands it's it's a normal process and it's done just for your for your safety and for your goodness then on the issue of the clothes something that i tell mothers just be observant and don't ignore anything any change that is not usual from what maybe you were told in the hospital maybe from the bleeding even if you get excess bleeding because like me i think the clothes could have worsen they told me my clothes my clothes were up to here so if i it could have gone just the time i saw my leg changing the color from like two days three it could have been better but now i waited i thought and i think hiyo kitu ya kujiambia hapa nani shida tu za kuzaa zitaisha so i advise in one in matha if you see any changes that are unusual from the normal ones the breeding and the clacking of the of the boobs all the others just check with your with your doctor just to be safe on birth control methods i i think with time because that's what i have always told myself as time goes by as you glow maybe the hormones 
stop working as usual because I believe because I, I I still I still feel I had done my good calculations but I feel maybe the hormones stop working the usual way as you approach menopause I think the hormones just as you're approaching the hormones start changing and I think that what messed me so I can advise everyone unless when you're young below 30 because then I had I was 30 something you can try it and that is if maybe all oh, other birth plans are missing you but from 30 my own advice from my own analysis just is something yeah thank you so much and that was my burn in the oven stories